This is a quick video explaining emotion in the context of social psychology. The information is from my summary of the Psy 2 3 course from Macquarie University. Firstly, what is emotions? Emotions are brief, specific psychopsychological responses that drive goals which need to be met and they are usually social goals. Mood are more enduring than emotions and have less specific causes. The Duchenne smile was discovered by Ekman and it is a genuine smile in which the crow's feet by the eyes can be seen even more. The universality of basic expressions can be illustrated through the fact that 90% of isolated people, 90% of people who live in isolated communities around the world could identify happy faces but other expressions less so. In the physiological responses of emotions, we assume that we first feel the emotions and that causes a bodily reaction causes us to react. Here is a layout of the emotional reaction which first it stems from perception, then there is an emotion and then as a result the emotion causes us to act out in a physiological response. Emotions affect the autonomic, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system controls fight and flight and the parasympathetic controls rest, as I've stated earlier in another video. James Lang's theory of emotions. According to this theory, emotions happen after visceral arousal and motor reaction. This is a counterintuitive model because it states that emotions occur at the end. Peripheral theories include how autonomic system is activated before the central nervous system is able to interpret what is going on. Cannon's criticism of James. The central nervous system is important because it causes hypothalamic arousal, which creates bodily changes and emotion simultaneously. Reasons for this criticism include how previous experiments showed in the spinal lesions of animals that animals continue to display emotions despite, well, having a spinal lesion. James Lang's model doesn't differentiate between the different emotions despite it occurring from the same physiological responses, from the same physiological arousal. So instead, Cannon postulates in this hypothalamic arousal that then causes both bodily experiences and emotions. Facial feedback, Laird, 1984. By placing electrodes on the face and asking participants to lift up a cheek, Laird was able to force people to smile and this made them happier. This thus shows that there is a facial feedback loop in which emotions are influenced by facial expressions which are also influenced by emotions. Schkader and Singer in 1962 postulated the two-factor theory model in which emotions experienced by one depends on a situation's meaning or the attributed arousal. In the experiment, individuals are placed in an adrenaline or placebo group and some of the participants in the group are informed of the true effects of adrenaline and thus over attribute to adrenaline and others who were not informed of the effects of adrenaline did not over attribute to the adrenaline and thus felt more like the confederates. This thus found that undifferentiated arousal occurred first and then a construal was developed later, post hoc reasoning, in which one reasons for the cause of the arousal, why it has taken place. Zillman in 1978 discovered the misattribution of arousal, in which he showed participants cartoons or erotic pictures, and they made a misattribution of arousal, since before they were shown these, images they were told or required to ride a bike and yeah they made a misattribution of arousal. In summary we briefly looked at the physiology of emotions by defining key terms like mood, Duchenne smile and we also looked at theories like the common physiological response theory, James Lang's theory of emotion, Cannon's criticism, Laird's facial feedback, Schkader and Singer 1962's two-factor theory model and Zillman's misattribution of arousal. The next video I will be talking about disgust. Thanks for watching.